In last week's episode, we talked about aesthetic. Let's see what you had to say. Uh, so before we get started, there's some construction that's happening on the floor above us, and uh, it shows no sign of slowing. So I apologize if there's any weird banging sounds. Um, I promise we're safe. Uh, it's just kind of loud here right now. Sorry if it's distracting. So it would seem that we need to confront the specter of both irony and vaporwave, uh, both of which, for a very good reason, loom rather large over last week's aesthetic episode. So towards that end, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna talk for a little bit. Uh, we're gonna show some related comments below, but with one exception, I'm not gonna respond to uh, individual comments specifically, but more like lots of comments generally. And then at the end, I think we're gonna talk a little bit about Idea Channel because I think this could be, this could end up being a fruitful discussion. For many people, last week's episode had a gross oversight, um, though it was underscored by and visually referenced um, the musical genre Vaporwave, uh, there was no direct mention of Vaporwave, which yes, I know and love, love me some Vaporwave. Um, if you're unfamiliar, it's these kind of like down-tempo, slowed down EDM slash electro-inspired tunes that, uh, I mean, I guess if, I mean, if you want a, a starter course, you can just click on the links in the description of last week's video. There are a lot of good tracks just in there. Vaporwave didn't start on 4chan, but it is strongly associated with 4chan's um, Mu board, M-U, the music board. And uh, like a lot of other cultural artifacts which can be traced back to 4chan, um, the sense of irony is very strong in the Vaporwave community, which is not to say that Vaporwave itself is devoid of earnestness or that people who enjoy it don't do so honestly, but that a lot of the conversation that surrounds Vaporwave and a lot of the... Um, a lot of the supporting material, especially visuals, um, make heavy ironic use of uh, their source material. There's, just, there's a lot of irony. And the strange but ultimately weirdly appropriate mix of things that come together to form the vaporwave aesthetic, both uh, the music and the visual material, um, has been labeled as exactly that, as aesthetic, as though kind of like vaporwave has a corner on the, on the aesthetic market. So frequently the usage of the word aesthetic online is directly related to the vaporwave genre, um, with aesthetic comments serving as um, nothing more, which we're gonna talk about more in a second, than an announcement of the fact that the thing being commented on can be viewed as part of the larger vaporwave genre, which um, Frank Javsey describes as kind of like living in a junkyard in a dystopian future and you find a bunch of VHS tapes and you're the only person in the world and everything is lonely, but you have a bunch of weed and you're high all the time and you're in Japan and you're in the sky. So basically just watch Frank Javsey's How to Make Vaporwave video and I think that you'll immediately get a sense for the the kind of irony we're talking about here. Which is to say that aesthetic comments, um, they might be used to indicate like, oh hey, this thing is vaporwave or vaporwave-ish, but they can also be used to lampoon or predict or preempt um, people who may write aesthetic on such things or any other digital artifact for that matter um, and mean it earnestly. Importantly though, for some people, the ironic sense of aesthetic is the most commonly deployed sense. Um, and when they say things like, I've never seen someone use this word earnestly, it only ever works in relationship to vaporwave and therefore you've missed something. I mean, I, you know, I can't argue. Uh, I, I can't tell you uh, what you have and have not seen, but here I think is where we can have what could be uh, an instructive conversation about idea channel in general, especially as it relates to this idea of missing things. Because um, when I'm writing episodes, what I'm hoping that I'm doing is putting together a framework where you can uh, apply that framework to the things that you have seen and the things that you interact with online. And ultimately the hope is that the acts of interpretation that we do here on Idea Channel can be fruitfully applied to your experiences and then you can view these things that you see every day, hopefully in uh, new and interesting ways. I can be so bold as to suggest that as a possibility. Um, and I think a large response to last week's video seems not to be, I have applied this framework that you put together to my experience and uh, here's what I got with one possible answer being zilch, uh, but rather my experience isn't represented in this framework and therefore the framework itself is uh, incomplete or wrong. Which, I mean, sure, I think this is an effect of the fact that we are in a peculiar relationship um, 
via idea channel. Because I'm not super interested in um, telling you how to use the perspective and theory that we cover in the main episodes, with, I guess, the exception of this very video that you're watching right now. Um, that's your call, what you do with the information that we cover on Idea Channel episodes, but I think it suffices to say that it's not like a, a science channel. Like, I'm not here to provide proof uh, for why things are the way that they are. I'm here because I'm interested in theorizing about how and why certain things may be the case. Uh, and we do things like this, comment responses, so that we can share between me and you, but also between you all in uh, the, the fruits of subjective experience. And there seems to have been a disconnect um, on the aesthetic episode, which prevented that from happening. And it leads me to wonder um, what the source of that disconnect is. And, you know, in the past, we've talked about Rugnetta's Law, uh, where no matter how much we try to sort of cram into and reference in a particular episode, there's always going to be a person or group of people who are really disappointed that we didn't mention X thing. Uh, so it, perhaps it's that Rugnetta's Law has something of a corollary that as the size of that group grows alongside the perceived... Um, obviousness of the oversight, it becomes increasingly more difficult to interact with a video on its own terms. So then it's up to us uh, making the show to sort of judge the, the possible egregiousness of that that we're choosing to leave out and figure out how to best acknowledge it even in passing so that its absence isn't isn't like um, jarring or, or uh, uh, distracting from the larger point of what we're, what we're getting at. So for what it's worth, and um, I realize it's, it's you know, uh, possibly not worth a lot, my hope was that the subtle nods to Vaporwave in the episode would encourage those familiar with it to not, uh, to, uh, to apply the theory that we presented in last week's video without being sort of uh, like explicitly told to do so or how to do so. But, uh, you know, it stands to reason that the nods that we made towards Vaporwave were, were too subtle and made it seem not like encouragement, but like um, an, an absence or an oversight. Phoenixius on the subreddit was one of a few people who made that connection and wrote what I think is a really nice and appropriate read on the earnest value judgment, uh, which was what we sort of described in the episode, that can arise from the possibly only ever ironic sense of the word aesthetic. And they write, um, and I'm just gonna read this directly. Um, What's more interesting than dank internet versus geek internet is the way this appears to be able to influence what is actually considered aesthetic. The poop side takes the sarcastic meaning and finds a more sincere appreciation for the distorted content originally intended as parody. And the fandom side can use the originally satirical barb to form new headcanons or otherwise explore in a new direction their object of affection. I also disagree agree that aesthetic was um, originally a satirical barb, as Phoenixius puts it. Its use as an earnest mark of appreciation predates its associations with um, vaporwave and irony by a long shot, though it may not overshadow them, at least not in certain corners of the internet. I think YouTube chief amongst them. But altogether, I do think that Phoenixius's point is um, worthy of consideration because at its heart is this really interesting claim that though irony may feel like a shield, it doesn't totally uh, like isolate you. Ironically, labeling something as aesthetic, it doesn't preclude admission of some affect on the part of the commenter and it still signals to people that the subject somehow is aesthetic whatever that means. And those collected actions have a meaning insofar as they develop a value and a cachet for um, everything that has already been labeled aesthetic and everything that's out there that is potentially labelable as aesthetic, even if it's done ironically, right? Because irony doesn't really isolate one from creating meaning or engaging in value judgments as we described in the episode. Phoenixius's point may also lead to, I think, another really interesting and important line of questioning that arrives at a much, much larger, more complex topic, which maybe is just a, worth its own video. And that's why a lot of us may assume, lacking evidence to the contrary, that people online are having ironic experiences as opposed to earnest ones, which I think we do a lot of the time. And I think weirdly, it's, it's hard in a lot of situations and for a lot of people to assume earnestness on the part of people writing comments or having experiences online. It's a reflex that a lot of us have, 
But like I said, I think it's also a topic for another time. Uh, so link to uh, the Phoenixius, to Phoenixius's comment in the doobly-doo uh, if you want to read the whole thing. And I also know that I said last week we would talk about the whole science versus philosophy thing this week, but I have now yammered way too long about irony and vaporwave and aesthetics, so we'll save that for next week. See you then. Thanks for being awesome.